Hi, it's Kevin Markman. Welcome back to Relationship Brady Talks. Thank you very much for coming and joining. And uh, today we're going to talk about our relationships and hopefully find some things that you can relate to. So today our guest is Sarah Benson. Hi, Sarah. Thank Hi, you very Kevin. much for coming. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me. Yeah, well, um, tell us a little <coughs> bit about you and what I should know and we should know about you. Um, so I guess... I'm studying mental health counseling at SUNY Brockport right now. Um, I do stand-up comedy. We met probably, like, I started doing comedy in Rochester, like, nine years ago. So we probably met, like, that long ago. Yeah, I think I was, like, six or seven. So oh. I was six or seven. But okay, yeah. well, yeah. whatever. It all blurs together. together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So those are the biggest things. I moved to Denver at one point. Now I'm back. Love Denver. Happy to be back in Rochester. Mm -hmm. And so. we're happy to have you back Thank here. You. Too, so. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. So. It's good to be back. Good. Good. So since we talk about relationships, you've chosen a relationship to talk about for us today. Uh -huh. So tell us about the beginning of this relationship and how did it start? And where did you meet? Okay. So before the relationship even started, this is back when I was in Denver. So I think this was like the year 2019 or 20, yeah, 2019. Um, so I moved to Denver and that summer I went on a trip just like by myself I do like a fair amount of solo like camping trips and stuff okay. just because it's tough to find people who like want to go camping with you and whatnot like yep. also I just but moved this to was a big significant trip it had. was kind yeah. of a significant trip it was the first time I ever went to Flaming Gorge which is like this beautiful place in Wyoming um super remote and like on this incredible reservoir and like you can just park your car and just like camp on this like peninsula going into the reservoir yes. it's like one of my favorite places ever so I found this spot on Google Maps like nobody really knows about it like got there I was the only one there then on my way back like from this trip I went to a thrift store and I found a Pirates of the Caribbean shirt and I was like feeling really good I got this Pirates of the Caribbean shirt I was feeling very like independent you know but I was like you know what the next guy I like bang or whatever I'm gonna give him this shirt I wanted to pass it along <laughs> yeah like uh I wanted to pass it along I don't know why I thought that I think it was because I was feeling like so independent in my life you know I had also like recently hiked the Appalachian Trail and like you know I was feeling was so a big accomplishment as well too yeah that, that was good. yeah so you're feeling yourself I'm you're feeling, feeling really good. good I'm feeling good and like so many of these good feelings that I have, like, when I get them, I'm like, okay, like, everybody says when you're confident, you're just going to, like, find the love of your life or whatever. Okay. So I'm so like... you're feeling that confidence. I was feeling it. I'm like, this is going to, you know, like, this year is going to, like, it's going to be good, you know? Okay. So what um, was the, uh, the meaning of the Pirates of the Caribbean thing? What was that connection for you? Why was it that shirt that was like, yes, this is important? <laughs> I really like, I like the movie, Pirates of Kirby, and, like, the first one. I like it a lot. Like, I used to work at Disney. Like, I just think it's fun. So I got this shirt, and I'm like, hell yeah, like, next dude I bang, like, he's going to be great. Like, I'm going to give him this shirt, and it's going to be so funny, and we're just going to laugh, and it's going to be great. And he's going to get it, because he's going to get me. <laughs> okay, so it represented you, and he's going to get you, and you're going yes. to to him and be with him. Yes. Okay. Oh, my gosh, yes. Okay. So fast forward, like, a couple weeks later, I'm on OkCupid, I think, like Tinder and OkCupid, but OkCupid is like the one where it's a little bit more in depth, I'd say, because you can answer like 600 questions about yourself. Okay. And then, so it has a whole interview process in that one, It too. does, so then, yes. So that one, so okay. Yes, okay. so you're like compatible or whatever, even okay. though, whatever, we'll talk about that later. I don't know what that, <laughs> I don't know what that means. So I meet this guy and we message and then like he has this cute little dog, his profile like description is like so long I honestly do not read it I'm just like he's cute and he's got a little dog yeah, so like, that's what brought you to him was cute and a little dog cute and a little dog okay. yeah and it was like this it's this little white like Bijani dog like not a masculine dog like okay. just a a dog that a man would have if he didn't really care what people think like uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. right. so I'm like in this vibe um and then we go out for coffee and it's cool like I work at a payroll company he works at a payroll company so you've got things in common have, just from the profile and, and that wasn't and even that, from that the profile. profile that was like when we went out for coffee okay. like so your first 
connection was on OkCupid, yes. and then you chatted for... Not long. Okay. I, like, typically am just like, let's go meet. Like, okay. it was a little bit of chatting. He was out of town for the weekend, and then he came back, and I'm like, hey, let's get coffee. Like, okay. so then we got coffee. Like, it was fun. I felt, like, good vibes. Like, it was... I don't know. Fun might be a strong word. It was good enough. Like, okay. it was good enough. So good enough meant you realized you both worked in the same thing. And yes. And had something in common enough and he was to like, be like, no, I'm not crossing them off. Yes, exactly. Okay. And he was liberal and he was a stoner. And like, I'm not going to lie. I think at the time I was like attracted to stoners. I think I am attracted to stoners, but I think okay. like, I think, uh, that's, you know, there's probably a lot to deconstruct in my own life with that. But, but what like, what do you think of stoner? What do you think of? I think mellow and okay. I think like chill, but actually like ironically, all of the stoners that I've met have been very anxious. <laughs> so they've been like really anxious. No exception, like, okay. very anxious. But, okay. um, so anyway, like, he's in a weed, he's got, like, a job that he likes, and okay. we work in the same industry or whatever, kind of, so in a way. So found all that out in the first coffee. Yeah, kind of yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, like, we go out again, and, like, you know, we have, like, kind of a philosophical type conversation a little bit. Like, it was good. Like, you okay. know, we could talk about, so was like... was that another coffee date, or what was that? Oh, we got food that time. Okay, so yeah. you moved from coffee to food. Yeah. And then moved from, we have things in common, to philosophy. Yeah, yeah. like, okay. kind of philosophical, like, or at least, like, political philosophical kind of thing. Like, okay. you know, he was able to, like, acknowledge, like, systemic oppression with people, you know, and, like, yeah. he, and like... that was important to you to, to yes. like, value... There. Okay. For, yes, okay. for him to be able to like acknowledge things like that, and like you know, he seemed to understand stuff like that, and that's stuff that I think is important to understand. So there was that, and then it was so funny. He was like, "This was like an Indian food place, at, like a strip mall or some something like that." And he was like, uh, "Can I walk you out to your car?" And I'm like, you know, like I said, independent lady. Like, why do you feel like you have to walk me out? To I had no idea, but that's just something dudes do when they want to make out. I had no <laughs> idea. I did not know that, but now I know. Okay. Historically, looking back, so at it wasn't it. patriarchal or polite or no. Male. It's just like let me walk you out to your car so we can kiss or whatever. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. yeah. So like, uh, he walked me out to my car and we made out, and I'm like, hell yeah, like this is gonna be it. Like, so it was good. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll get into that later, but okay. it was good. <laughs> Yeah. But um, this feels so weird. Yeah. Like, am I doing? This is good. This we're doing is, it. Uh, relationships are weird. So thank you. It, it is so. weird. It's like tough to talk about. Yeah. But You're doing great. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing great. Thank Making you. me feel very like okay. <laughs> um, yeah. But then we like made out or whatever, and then um, that was fine. That was fun. And then I actually went over to my friend's place or they came over to my place or no I went over to my friend's place and we watched Pirates of the Caribbean we had plans to do that <laughs> with your friends yeah with, with, with my friends and um yeah oh and then the thing about this that was wild the Pirates tie-in was he's like a computer software engineer and like okay. he's he like loves pirates because it's all like hacking or whatever or something uh, like pirates are hackers next yes. to modern day yes. Johnny. Yes. And he like loves pirates. And when I, when like the whole pirate thing happened, I was like cosmic connection, <laughs> which like, you know, I don't know if leaning into cosmic connections is right or wrong, but, but you were leaning into I was leaning that. into it. Yeah. Okay. I was like, this is fate. He likes pirates. I like pirates. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> he was literally building like a hard drive thingy and he was calling it like the Kraken or something. And he was like, I'm going to spray paint like a big octopus on there. Like, and I was like, whoa, like this is the universe yes, bringing to us you. together. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah. So we, um, and after that, like, you know, I invited him over to like, show me his like weed. Also, I need, just need to say, I do not smoke weed anymore. I don't do anything like that anymore because okay. I have a job where I cannot do anything like that okay. anymore. So, so that didn't have to do with the relationship that had to do with the job. Pardon? That didn't have to do with this relationship. That no, to do with that's job. just, I'm saying yeah. currently, I was Are like, you? I got to tap out for a second. I got to say okay. that. But back in the day, loved it, you know, okay. loved okay. it. But, and, um, but you were Feeling good after this date, went over and we're riding that vibe. Watched Pirates of the Caribbean with your friend. We're talking about how good yeah. it was and yes. riding that. Did you have plans to see each other again after that? Yes. Or, or yeah. Made those we plans made those already? plans. Okay. He right. was like, "Yeah, I'll show you all my weed paraphernalia," and I was like, "Wow." 
Wow. <laughs> wow. A man who likes pirates, has a job, has weed paraphernalia, and he, like, showed me how to, like, smoke his little bowl thing or whatever. He's like, you gotta put your finger here so the air can, like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. This is the hottest thing ever. So, um... Yeah, then then we started, like, a dating relationship. And I actually think we went out for Frisbee golf at some point, like, before that. And I was not really into it. I was just like, let's walk around. And, like, that was pretty much it. But then, like... But frisbee golf because that was part of the stoner thing. And we're like, frisbee golf, that's a thing mellow stoner people do. I'll go, <laughs> I'll go check out what he's doing. Yes, it was like, I'll like go it. check out what he's doing. He loves okay. frisbee golf. Okay. He loves it. Uh, but you didn't fall in love with the frisbee golf. No, I was okay. so bad at it. Whenever anyone tries to do anything athletic, I'm like, let's just take a walk and then sit down. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. I love to walk. I love to hike. But that's like, that's that's how that's far I get. Yeah, yeah. So that's So that was that like the first thing that you didn't fully connect on? Yeah, I guess looking back on it, that probably was. Okay. But also, like, he never made me laugh, like, throughout the relationship okay. and in the beginning. And I didn't think about that until, okay. like, the relationship Because the other part. stuff was more important at the time and you were focused on that? I think I just was, like, I think I just wanted to be done dating and I felt like it was the time. Like, I felt like I was entitled to be done with dating. Okay. I was, like, I had just gotten a job that was, like, high paying career type job okay. like and I was like I have a job comedy's going well like comedy I was like in the Denver scene like it was good yeah. like comedy was going well work was going good like you know I felt like emotionally independent and like all this stuff I was like it is time for me to have a functional relationship now okay. like so you're functioning the other areas well in yes. another plateau and you were like now I need the person in my life to be this and be done with dating. I kind of thought that that was like how it worked. Okay. I think I just thought like everybody says when you're really confident and like your job is going well and like you're, you know, like all the pieces are going well, mm -hmm. like then it'll just happen. And I, so this was the, that happened. Yes. Okay. So I was like, okay, I met a dude who seems pretty normal. Like this is, he likes pirates. Like, Looking back on it, the stuff that I, like, thought was important is just so insignificant. Okay, and like, so pirates isn't as important, important No, as it's that. not at all. Okay. It's, like, literally not at all. I think I put so much emphasis into it, like, this is a sign, like, and I think I do that sometimes, but in this relationship, I really think I, I did that. Okay. So. And so you're doing that in the beginning, and then the frisbee golf hit, where you're still doing it after that? Um, I think I was, the frisbee golf hit, and then the sex started, and then the sex was, like, good, so I was, like, okay. I guess we just figured it out, like, okay. but I don't think so I was... So did that take it to another level, or did that just maintain how good it was from the beginning? I don't know, because it was, it was just good, but it was, like, I was never, like, in love with him, you know? It was never, like, it was never, like, I love this guy. Like, I never, and I remember thinking, like, should I, like, love him more? Like, should I love him? Like, especially after, like, a month or two, I was, like, should I, like, love him? Like, I like spending time with him, but really it was more just, like, a way of decompressing. It wasn't okay. like I was, like, really growing or getting anything from it. It was just like, oh, I like having something to look forward to in the sense that I like being able to look forward to just, like, chilling out with this dude. Okay. You know? What was the feeling towards him at that time? If it wasn't like, oh, I do love him, it was I what? What did you feel about him? Ooh, Kevin, I don't even know. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I think it was like, I feel like I have someone in my life. Okay. Like. Right. So maybe some security that I've got someone that's fitting into. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. And, and some security, like I have someone who cares about me or something. Okay. You know, okay. like I have someone who cares about me on like a deeper level than friendship or whatever who I'm theoretically supposed to feel comfortable like being vulnerable with and all that kind of stuff okay. but I never like was like mm. there's so much that he does not know about me and did not know about me okay. and like I think I just thought self-disclosure would happen like I thought I think I just thought it happens but you actually need to have a connection for it to happen okay. is what I'm so realizing you, so you didn't quite have that connection no. to be able to have the self-disclosure but you had the things in common, and then sex was good, so you were like, this is good, this fits into my life. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's exactly it, I think. Okay, so where did it go from there? So, from there, we, like, continued to date, 
And I think, like, because I wanted a boyfriend figure, I think I just, like, put him in that box, even though there wasn't, like, that emotional or, like, what I would call, like, a spiritual connection. Okay. It was just, like, we continued to date. It was almost like at one point we were just, like, like, it's like, oh, this is, like, an adult relationship. Like, I feel like I'm like, playing the role of being in a relationship. like, okay. And it felt good? It felt okay. Oh, I think okay. it felt okay. But there were definitely parts of me that were confused and not really enjoying it. Okay. So, like, we went, I mean, a couple of months in or whatever, you know, like, we went to each other's, like, work holiday functions, and it's like, you know, and like... that felt very adult. Like, yeah, oh, you're, you're it felt like, like yeah, it felt like, okay, this is what you do now, I guess, like, you go to each other's work parties and stuff, mm -hmm. and, like, you know, like, we went to each other's work parties, I, like, kind of introduced him, he would, like, sometimes go to my comedy shows, but not very often, and this was also something where, like, I'm realizing I really would like someone who, like, appreciates and appreciates my comedy and also, like, leaves the house, like, a little bit. Like, I know I'm an introvert, but, like, he was, like, kind of a super introvert, I'd say. Okay. And, um, so he would, like, go to my shows, but you could tell I don't think, and he wouldn't go to very many of them, and I don't think he really, like, got it. Like, he'd be like, this is cool, but, like... Did he enjoy your shows? Did he enjoy your... He enjoyed my humor? comedy, I think. Okay. How could you not? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just kidding. He, like, you know, he enjoyed it or whatever, but it definitely wasn't something that he was, like, enthusiastic to do or be a part of. Okay. But and he was doing it because he was in a relationship with you, and that was the thing you were doing, so he was joining you in that. Yes, and okay. I think he really only joined me in that one. Once. It was pretty early on in our relationship. It was a show that I was headlining, and it was, like, um, a pretty small venue, like, a little, like, beer-tasting thing. Like, it was very intimate, and um, he was good about it and stuff, and it was a good crowd or whatever, but, like, I don't know. You could tell, or I felt like... I felt like he was just playing a role, and I was just, like, playing a role. Okay. And we were kind of just doing it because it's what we thought we were supposed to do. Okay. But, like, yeah. And then, like, there were shows that were really significant to me, like, at least one that I really wanted him to go to because I knew it was going to be, like, rad, and it was amazing. Like, it was probably one of the best shows I ever did. Oh, wow. And, like, you know, he just didn't want to go, and, like... So he didn't... He knew how important that was to you and didn't really want to go, or he didn't really know how important that was to you? I probably didn't communicate it the best. I'm not very good at expressing my emotions or communicating that kind of stuff. Okay. I'm not super great at communicating my needs. I'm just like, let's break it off. <laughs> like, yeah. you should just know. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't think I expressed it enough, but I did say stuff like, this is going to be a really cool show. Like, But he didn't pick up on it either. No, he didn't pick up on it either. And I also think, like, again, with the vulnerability thing, you have to be compatible in order to feel comfortable to be vulnerable. Okay. And I think I would have been more vulnerable had I felt more... Okay. Of a but that was as comfortable as you felt. Yeah. You express that much. And had you committed to each other? To oh, yeah. We, we committed to each other within like a week or two weeks or probably two weeks or a month. I started okay. calling him babe after two weeks. Sure. I was just like, I'm going to go for it. I was like texting him at work like, hey, babe. Like, <laughs> I was just like, I'm just going to do it. Like, And that was the commitment? Was when you said babe or did you have a discussion about We had about a discussion commitment? about commitment. What was that like? It was like... Honestly, it was kind of like, you know, I like you, you like me, we like each other, let's just be done. That's kind of how it felt okay. like, like, neither of us wanted to date more. Like, okay. neither of us had other coals in the fire, I think. So, like, we were just like, let's just tap so out. So, he was like, on the same page with you with that. Oh, yeah, 100%. Both of you fit each other's boxes of, like, yes, this is my dating, I don't have to date. Yeah, anymore. and I <laughs> really think that that was partially it. Like, it's like... It was tough to find just people who wanted to just be monogamous and just, like, you know, do okay. that or whatever. So you were looking for people at yes, that time. Yes, we were both looking for people to just, like, only right. be with or whatever. Okay, and so. the other experience you had didn't have that, so this is what made him special enough to be able to be like, yes, we're going for this. Yeah, okay. I think I've just done a lot of kind of, like, 
dating experiences where it's really unclear or like you don't, the other person doesn't want that, like you said, or, and I had been in some like very, I had been in one really bad relationship and he was not like that guy at all. So that was also very so attractive. This was different and made it more attractive yes. because he wasn't like the bad experience. So. Yes. He okay. was not like the bad experience. Okay. So, okay. so that was kind of like, I guess the middle was like, you know, the whole like, you're not really into my passions and, and then things kind of started to get a little bit worse. Yeah, so it was okay for a while. How long did okay last in the middle? Right? Um, okay probably lasted, like, okay probably, and honestly, like, it's tough to even tell because, like, some of it is just the excitement of a new relationship, you know? Like, mm -hmm. in the beginning, it's like, you're hopeful over this idea that doesn't even necessarily exist, mm -hmm. you know? So, like, the beginning, I'd say, like, the first month, the first month or two was probably good. And then by, like, December, I remember feeling that it was, like, kind of crumbling. So we started dating late August. So, like, September, October, I think, was pretty good. November, I don't really... November, I remember thinking, like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then December, so it was, like... you started like, questioning. Yeah. Because you were looking for more of a connection, more of vulnerability. What was, what was missing? I don't even, like, honestly, I don't think I knew it at the time, but I think okay. I remember feeling something is off. Okay. Like, just something here is not right. So that was the question. So yeah. What's not right? What is not right? Exactly. Okay. It's like, this dude has a job. Like, this dude, like, likes weed also. <laughs> like, pirates. Like, all of these stupid, superficial things. I was like, but all these things are good. Okay. Like, So you weren't getting answers, but you were starting to question. Yeah, okay. I was starting to question, and I was like, should I feel more? Like, if I'm investing my time and energy in this, or should I just be okay with, like it being just mellow and there not really being that much there. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I remember thinking, like, will that come? Like, will, like, the love part, like, come? Or is it just going to be, like, you know? Uh, and you still expected it to come? Like, yeah! To I still okay. did. I remember, like, thinking at one point in my apartment in Denver, so that would have had to be, like, December, I think, or January, like, Maybe it'll, maybe it'll, no, that must have been November or December. Like, I don't love this guy, but, like, maybe it'll happen. Like, do I love this guy? I do think about him sometimes. Like, I just remember really, and I think it's also because I had never been in love up to that point, mm. I think. Like, I think So I've, you hadn't experienced love before, but you were expecting it to happen. Yeah, I but. think that's exactly it. I think I hadn't been in love, so I think I was just, like, confused and like is this love and it's okay. like so you're questioning the relationship but you're all questioning what is love and is this what love is yes and yes this is all there is but shouldn't there be more yes exactly okay. because there really wasn't more and then like the questioning got a little more intense too once I realized like okay like I was looking for an apartment and I didn't want him to come like you and didn't it's want like, to come look for the apartment I didn't you? want him to come look for the apartment with me okay. but and you weren't talking about moving in no together. no god no no okay. No. Okay. no I was like looking for an apartment just for me and I didn't want him to be a part of that I was like gonna adopt a cat like and I didn't want him to be a part of that okay. and I'm like oh this is a bad sign <laughs> and then like but that was just the feeling you had that was not a wanted to be. yeah okay. and I don't even think at the time I knew that it wasn't a bad that it was a bad sign I thought it, okay. I think I just thought like these are two separate parts of my life like okay. you know this is my independent life that he's not necessarily part of my right. apartment getting a cat and he's my dating life right so, and yeah. I'm realizing you should probably want them to be a part of all the spheres <laughs> like if you reach a certain point yes, yeah we at that point we weren't okay. we were not and I think I like I also think because I am like a really independent person and because I am like pretty emotionally guarded I do think it's like also just difficult for me to like let people in and stuff and like part of me was like am I just like, is this wrong? Am I not letting him in or whatever? And I'm like, no, this feels right to have him, like, in this other sphere. Okay. Like, with my other sections of my life, you know? like. But you knew it felt right in you. Yeah, it felt like the right thing to do. Heart. Yeah, okay. I was like, it feels like the right thing to do to keep them kind of separate. Okay. And it felt right to keep them separate as opposed to being more vulnerable and going, oh, you can be part of the Yeah, yes. Okay. And it's so ironic because... 
I wrote a joke about him, and it's my lover joke, and I love this joke. You probably haven't seen it, but I literally end every, like, long... If I have 15 minutes or more, I do this joke literally every single time. Okay. And it's, like, crowd work. I'm, like, talking about how I've taken a lover, like... Oh, uh, yes, I have. Yeah! <laughs> Oh yes, the lover joke. But I love that joke. And it's funny because one of my friends called me out. He's like, I hate that you use the word lover because it like it downplays actual intimacy. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm like, no, you just don't understand. But it's like, yeah, it like absolutely does downplay actual intimacy. And like I wrote that joke very early into dating. And, like, I think it's such a weird, like, symbol of my unconscious mind because it's, like, I wanted him to be, like, this lover or whatever, but, like... And downplay the intimacy? Yeah, but I think I downplayed the intimacy right from the start. Okay. And I think I never fully felt comfortable being intimate with him. So, like, and this lover joke is just, like, such a representation of that. It's like I'm talking about how I met someone and I took a lover, but I'm, like, just totally making fun of the word lover. I'm, like, not actually conveying any enthusiasm about the person. Mm -hmm. It's not even about it. It's, like... I'm making a joke about, I'm making, like, a stupid joke about, like, something that I wanted to be significant in my life, but, like, clearly I'm not even letting it be significant. Uh, so, okay. I do kind of think it's just, like, so, so that was wild. But, yeah, I love that lover joke. So, yeah. And then things, like, other things, like, um, that really just took me on a bad path. Took okay, me so on a... What, so, that was part of the signs that started to show you that you didn't want to involve him in your apartment hunting. Yeah. And so what were some of the other signs that things started to go bad? Oh, yeah. Okay, so here was a big sign. And this is going to sound so dumb. Everybody's going to be like, Sarah, you let one grocery store trip ruin your relationship. <laughs> And I'm like, People yes. Have lost it for less. <laughs> People have what? Lost it for less. Ha! <laughs> yes. So, okay. So we went to the grocery store one time because we were making enchiladas or whatever. We're like, we're going to make enchiladas today. And uh, we went to the grocery store and... You know, I kind of knew he was arrogant. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, okay. he, I, we had had conversations where, like, he was telling me about arguments that he had gotten to with people. And he was like, no, but I'm just right. And I'm like, but sometimes it's not about being right. You know, like, sometimes, babe, it's just not about being right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you talk to him. That's honestly, like, not. I don't think I would... I don't think I would throw around babe that much because he okay. wouldn't find it funny. Like, that's my humor. I'm like, uh, babe, lover. And, like, he wouldn't, like... He didn't like, get that. No, okay. he didn't get that. His humor was Trailer Park Boys. We just smoked weed and watched Trailer Park Boys. And that is a red flag for a relationship. Because <laughs> he didn't really like Trailer Park Boys? I, you know, I think Trailer Park says some... Trailer Park Boys has some funny moments. Okay. The but puppet, it wasn't you and your passion. But it's not me and my passion. No. That's not us connecting through art. <laughs> like... That was just you hanging out. That was just... Weed watching us numbing ourselves watching some stupid Canadians but like very funny but like also like I love film and TV like don't get me wrong I love film I think you can genuinely connect with people by watching movies like but we weren't watching those types of movies like you know what I mean like so that wasn't a thing like it wasn't was your shows that you were like we're gonna save this show for us yeah it wasn't together. it was okay. like he was like i like trailer park boys and i was like i like whatever you like babe <laughs> like you know okay. i could learn to like that the parsley thing though okay, okay so we get to the grocery store is it okay that i'm like so tangential or no, whatever just follow your path thank this you, you. <laughs> thank you thank you so the, the the grocery store we get to the grocery store and there's parsley and there's cilantro and like I'm like, okay, like, I got the cilantro, and he's like, no, that's definitely parsley, and I'm like, no, dude, like, it's where the cilantro goes, like, it's, like, labeled cilantro, like, okay. you know, like, it's right there, and he's like, no, that is definitely parsley, and I'm like, dude, like, it's labeled cilantro, like, look at the bushel, like, it's got a tag on it. So you're arguing says, over cilantro versus parsley. Yeah, he thinks store. that it's parsley, but it's cilantro. <laughs> it's very clearly cilantro, like, he is, like, so he is dead wrong, set. But He's admit wrong, it, you're right. but cannot okay. admit it. He okay. is wrong, and, like, literally hundreds of signs say that he's wrong, but okay. he can't be, like... Oh, no, I was wrong. Like, he just... Yeah. And there's no chance that you were wrong, that you were absolutely Literally wrong. no chance. No chance. Okay. Yeah. I think, like, he was arguing that they, like, mislabeled it. And I'm like, uh -huh. okay. but it says, like, 
It says that it's cilantro. Yep. Like, so and that he's was, not like a food expert or anything like that. No, he's just a white guy. He's just a dude. <laughs> you know, who knows like, better because he's a white guy. Yeah, okay. who knows better because he's a software engineer and yada, 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 a little prodigy buddy, like whatever. He's so yeah. smart. Ugh, like. <laughs> so, so that was the feeling you were having while you were arguing with him. Yeah, he's like very arrogant, like. He's honestly kind of arrogant. And I think he knows that about himself. So, like, even when we talk now, he'll be like, yeah, at work, I'm not trying to be the smartest guy in the room, but I am. And I'm like, that is the least attractive quality in the world. And was that the first time you saw that? Or did you it know that before and then something was more significant about this grocery visit? So I knew it before based on one conversation that we had going into like a breakfast that we were getting with one of my friends. He was talking about like a fight that he got in with his coworker, And like, I was like, but like, even if you're right or whatever, like you just have to be okay with. You know, sometimes the feelings involved, it's not about being right. Okay. So. So that's what showed arrogance. Yeah. And then you went, oh, here's another arrogance. Yes. And then. Or you knew there was arrogance there and you I were don't think I, to him? Or no, I don't, sure? th I don't okay. think I knew that there was arrogance there. Okay. I think when people are arrogant around me, I'm like, no, they're just smarter than I am. <laughs> like, I think I very much let them have it until it becomes too much. So that's what you wrote it off to in the first conversation. Yeah. And then you didn't write it off in the grocery store. And the grocery store I couldn't okay. I could not write it off I was like this is ridiculous and it kind of reminded me of something that like my mom is kind of similar like you could be a hundred people could tell her one thing like a hundred doctors could tell her like your knee is broken and if she's like no like I'm a doctor too like she's like acting as if she's yeah doctor she's doctor. like and my is mom she a doctor is, or no? no absolutely not my mom has had moments of like arrogance to like the point of delusion like okay. when I was growing up. She's a lot better now, but, like, she's had arrogance to the point of, like... Like, what's an arrogance to delusion thing? Um, I'd say, like, uh, she has, like, this... Well, there's just a lot. I... Part of me is, like, I don't want to... I'll make sure my mom doesn't watch this. Don't or watch Or you can this. do a, a mild thing, or you can skip it and pass it. She, want. like, thought she caused 9-11 and stuff. She, like, has these animals in the backyard that she feeds, and she kind of thinks of them as, like, her pets and stuff. Like, okay. she's a lot better now, though. Okay. Oh. But, but those things hit your buttons yeah, in that moment. Yeah, they hit my like... buttons. Yeah, and, like, um, she would also take it to a point where she would, like, make really personal attacks based off of, like, stuff because she thought that she was right or she'll, like, twist what you say or, like, she thinks that she's right to the point where she'll, like, kind of attack you personally if you have a different opinion. So that's what it felt like. And that's what you're set up for, for when somebody feels like they're right. Yeah, when people okay. feel like they're really, really right, like, for me, that's just a big turnoff. Like, okay. I would really, I'm much more attracted to people who are willing to admit that they don't know things. And I, like, think I'm pretty good at that. Like, I take feedback pretty well. You think but, you're like, pretty good at admitting when you don't know things? Yeah, I'm confused all the time. <laughs> like, okay. I'm confused and anxious all the time. Like, and I think, you know, like, like... I just couldn't connect with that energy, you know? So there was that, the grocery store thing. Then I went, like, I went to, like, a, a thing with his mom, and I talked to his mom about it. I'm like, here's what happened, like... Talk to mom about the grocery store? Yeah. yeah. I was okay. like, so what's Marcus really like? <laughs> okay. I was so like, you're diving for information. Me. I was diving for information. Scuba diving, if you will. <laughs> and, like, uh... He and I hung out, and she's like, no, that's, like, what he's like. He does think that he's right all the time, and, like, that's... He he can be like that, and I'm so like, you connected enough with mom for her to share yes. what he's like, Thank throwing you. him under the bus. You're great, yeah, <laughs> yeah, him. yeah. And he's not a bad person at all. These are just things that are like about him. Okay. So I connected with her, and she's like, so "No, you that's... mine for good things too." Or were you just mining for that? I think that. I was mining for that. I think I actually went in mining for like. Tell me something cute about when he was a baby or something. Okay. And, and then did I you came get that also or no? No. <laughs> no. Okay. I did it. No. So um yeah. So so that was uh, confirmed when you were in the grocery store, but then it was revalidated when you had the dinner with his mom. Yeah. And then did it 
continue from there, or what happened from there? Oh, from there, what did happen from there? there? Oh, you know what? There was something else that happened that was like the big red flag deal breaker thing. Okay. And it wasn't even with him being arrogant. So it was with him being like just super introverted and anxious, I guess, or something. So my parents visited. It was so fun. We saw them. My I had just moved to, like, the city of Denver. I was, okay. like, subletting with one of my friends. We were in, like, the okay. city, city, like... Um, and did the... Since you uh, since yeah. you brought up, and we'll come back around to that, yeah. but but you met mom, he met your parents. Yes, yes. You, did you feel another level of intimacy because you were involving family? Yes, no? I did a little bit, actually. Okay. Because he was really good with my mom. Like, he was great with my mom. My dad's pretty easy with everybody, but, like, he was good at making my mom feel comfortable and stuff like that. Okay. And I also think that might be because they have somewhat similar, like, personalities a little okay. bit. But so. that brought you closer? Yes, or? that brought me closer okay. a little bit. Also because, like, my parents' dog. She, like, really doesn't like people, and she definitely snapped at him, and he definitely took it well. That's, okay. like, the greatest thing ever when, like, okay. dudes handle okay, like, okay. yeah. So those were good things. Those were good things, too, and that, yeah. So that was still building. Yes. So it wasn't just okay. It was no. still building. It was okay. With more intimacy. Yes. And you're involving family. Yes. Yes. It was okay. definitely, like, that was a little bit intimate, I guess, like, but it was the love thing, but it was the family thing. It was the family thing, exactly. Okay. And it was also, like, I know he's close with his mom, like, and I was, you know, meeting her and becoming a part of her life, too. Okay. And I loved that he was close with his mom and stuff. I, okay. you know, I, I appreciated all that. So there was that. And I was also getting to know, like, his family, his siblings, and his nieces and stuff. And, okay. like, I was enjoying that. And then I was like, okay, like, part of me could see, like, a future with him, even though I didn't feel like I loved him, because I thought, maybe that'll come. Also, like, I could see a future, because it's like, okay, like, we're both pretty similar, neither of us really want to have kids, like... He would let um, me do my comedy thing, and he would do his software engineer thing. So you each had your own things. You each had similar goals. You yeah. You had kids. Your families, you negotiated each other. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We, like, know about our families and stuff, and, like, so I So could, that's where you were going into. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I could see visit. this, like, being a long-term thing, kind of. But okay. there was and were just, you discussing that, or no? No. We did kind of once, so okay. <laughs> we did kind of once. So I was tripping on shrooms. I took some shrooms, okay. took some shroomies, took some booms, and then uh, it was like not going very well. Like I've hit this was point that in my just life because of the, my Denver experience. Was this the micro dosing shrooms thing? That no, you know, dude. This people? was this like, like fully. Shrooms. I'm like fully just gonna go on a trip today. <laughs> Um, so I took some shrooms and, you know, I had the day off, whatever. I just moved into like that downtown apartment. So this was probably December. Um, so this is kind of when stuff is like crumbling a little bit, but also like you said, there was a family thing. So it was like, you know, kind of going well. So I took some shrooms and, um, I was like, babe, I'm like not feeling good because, you know, they hurt your tummy. Like they hurt your little tum tum. You got to figure that out. Half the time it's like, a total battle because of your stomach and stuff. You're so nauseous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm also realizing that has a lot to do with just anxiety, I think, too. So I was taking these shrooms. I was feeling really sick. I called him up. He came over. He brought his little dog, which was honestly really annoying because when you're tripping on shrooms, you don't want, like, a shrill little dog just barking. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. oh, but she's cute. Whatever. She's nice. But not while you're on shrooms. Not while I'm on shrooms. Right. So then like, you know, we hang out, we take a walk, whatever. It's cool. Like I'm coming down and I remember saying like at some point, like just, you know, if we ended up like getting married and like uh, having like a house or whatever together, like being together, I would want to pay for half the stuff, even though you make like way more than I do. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> he makes like a, bajillion dollars a year he's doing really well and I remember just feeling like I'm so into like equity with stuff like that and like I was like I want to pay for stuff too okay. so I did say that as I was coming and that down conversation from went well or no no okay. he was just like okay <laughs> it wasn't even a conversation it was like it was a moment a where I said that because I was on drugs a little bit okay. and then I realized like, like yep you're on drugs and then I realized like neither of us are really it was like one of those things like where you know in the future like neither this isn't gonna happen okay. like we're not gonna be a couple like so there was a moment of clarity there was a that. moment of clarity when I said that and I remember like around that time too like I was really trying to think like do I love him like 
do what I was really trying to think like do I love him what do I want to invest in this like do I love this guy and that was a solution you came up with at that moment what was the solution taking the shrooms no, no. The, while you're on shrooms oh yeah the, if we're yeah. together we're gonna uh, we're gonna pay the same amount. Yeah. Together, forever living together. Yeah, and then I remember after I said it, I was like, "We're not gonna do that, Sarah." <laughs> like, yeah. you and this guy? No, you barely even like this guy. But I, you know, I did like him. I did have some feelings for him, but it wasn't, you know, deep or whatever. Yeah. So there was that, and he was just like, "Okay." And I think, like, you know, I don't think it was necessarily bad. I don't. I have no idea what he was feeling or thinking about me at that point, honestly. Like, in our okay, relationship. You weren't communicating about that. Not really. Like, okay. not really at all. Okay. So, so then you went into dinner with your parents. Yeah. Or, or we had dinner with my parents, I think, before. Before that, maybe. Okay. And, and what also, happened there? So, it was good. Like, he was really good with my parents. My parents really liked him. Like... It was good. The thing that happened with my parents visiting is that my dad parked my car on the street and I kind of knew it was going to get towed. And it did get towed. I were supposed to hang out together that night. And my car got towed actually the night before. I parked my car at a different place. And it was like I was coming back from an open mic. It was really late at night. And a dude tried to get into my car with me. Probably to attack me, <laughs> like, and I had to drive away, like, as this guy was trying to get in my car. He was like, can I ask you something? And I was like, no. And then he was, like, trying to get in my car with me. Oof, and it was just, like, scary. weird. Yeah. yeah, it was very bizarre. The next day, my car gets towed, and Marcus and I That's are... your dad parked. Yeah, and my dad right. parked, yeah. Or it was, like, the same night, maybe, or something. It was very close, timeline-wise. Okay. And I was like, it's like, I had this weird experience last night, like... I'm trying to settle into my apartment, but, like, I'm just not feeling good. And he's, like, probably a half hour, 25 minutes away from where I'm living. It's, like, probably a half hour drive. Okay. Like, it's like, can you just come into the city tonight? Also, like, mind you, I live in Cap Hill in Denver, which is, like, parking is terrible. That's why all this parking shenanigans yeah, is happening. It's, like, the okay. worst parking in the city. Okay. So I'm like, can you just, like, come here? And you lived closer to each other before? Yeah, yeah. We had lived a little closer. Parking was way easier. Okay. Whatever, yeah. It was just a little easier. So you asked him I was like, babe, in. like, I, like, you know, I was always going to him. That was the other thing, too. I was, okay. like, always going to his place because he didn't have, like, a roommate or anything. So I was like, babe, like, can you just, like, come here tonight? Like, you know, like, I just, like, my car got towed. This weird thing happened. Like, I'm just, like, really not feeling it. Like, can you just come here? And he was like, I'm really tired. No. <laughs> and, like, meanwhile, I was like, we were going to hang out. Like, I know you're free. Like, I know you're free. We were going to hang out. I, like, need a little bit of support right now. Mm -hmm. Like, it was draining having to find my car after I got towed. Like, figuring out what lot it was in. Like, it was just a big headache, you know? Like, yeah. and he and was, like... Then he wasn't there for the support at all. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't see that from you. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, we did talk about it. And then, and then I was, like, dude, like... I was, like, really not in a great place. Like, you need to, like, be able to help, too. Like, because I always went to his apartment again. So which, this was a discussion about the relationship or about the that night? I think it was mostly about that night. Okay. Because it was, like, I don't mind. I didn't mind going to his place because it made sense. Like, he's a dog. He doesn't have, like, roommates and stuff. But what I'm realizing also, what I learned from this little snippet, I think, is that, like, even if someone's apartment is less ideal than someone else's, you've got to kind of spend 50-50 at each. You just, mm -hmm. like... For some equity. Yeah, some for equity some equity. equity. Like, you actually kind of have to. Even if one person's apartment, like, totally sucks, you have to be willing to hang out there because, like... To live in their world. Yeah, to live in their world. And, like, you just have to be okay with that. Okay. Like, and they have to be okay with coming to you, too. Yeah. So, yeah, so that was the thing. And then I was like... That was a real big, like, ooh, I realized it wasn't great. And then I think the shroom thing happened, and then I, and then I just found myself becoming attracted to, like, other people, like. Which you weren't as much before. What yeah, okay. yeah. I was, like, becoming attracted to, like, particularly this one dude who did comedy. If you're out there, he's not going to hear that name. <laughs> <laughs> and you're out there. Just now I had a crush on you when I had a boyfriend. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Then I was like, I gotta break up with him. Like, if I'm developing feelings for someone else, I need to break up with him. 
And so I did. And because I th- you were getting attracted to this other person? Or yes. because you were not finding yourself as attracted to... It was a little, I think it was a little mix of both. Okay. I think it was a little mix of both. Um, another thing that Marcus and I did before we broke up, and I thought it was going to be a saving grace, kind of, because all my comedy buddies, or a couple of my comedy buddies, were like, yeah, whenever like me and my significant other feel like we're drifting apart, we just do shrooms together. And I'm like, shrooms? going to save me again. <laughs> yeah, you can tell I was doing a lot of shrooms in Denver. <laughs> but um, again, not any time now, because I'm a you know responsible, whatever my career is. And you like, can't do shrooms and be responsible at the same time. No, you totally can. You 100% can. Okay. But I have to say these things because of my job. (laughs) Like, um, you totally can. Booms are great, man. Like, I think they can actually lead to a lot of really healthy inward, like, reflection if you respect them and, like, you know, have a plan and stuff. But, um, yeah. So, so so you thought about doing shrooms again. You did shrooms again. No, we did shrooms again. And it was wild, dude. I must have taken a lot of shrooms. He'd never really done them. Um, he did not like them. He didn't have a great time and he did not take that much. I took like, and I was like super just tripping or whatever. Um, and I remember uh, the trip was really weird and it did get bad. (laughs) It did get bad. So So it was good for a while? It was good. It was really good. There was a point where I was like reliving old memories of like, um, it was weird. I was, like, thinking about, like, a time when I was with a dude that I did actually like, and I was, like, describing it to him, and I was just saying, oh, I was with a bunch of my friends, and, like, and I felt like I was there, and that was so great, and then it took a dark turn. Like, I don't know, I, we had sex, and I saw Yoda, and then it got weird. And so Yoda was involved in yeah, sex? Yeah, okay. it was. But and that was bad. You weren't a big the Yoda was kid. good. Okay. The Yoda was fine. I was like, Yoda, he's so far away. And then, uh, and then I started seeing the clown from It, and like, I couldn't get it out of my head. And then, I also have this really quick, cryptic book, and I was seeing images from that book, and I was seeing like, the It clown, and I was like, trying to think of positive things and every time I did my brain would like censor it and I'm like okay it's okay I know it's just a shroom so it's okay but then when I looked at this, I just saw these two monsters eating his brain Ooh. and I was like this might be a bad sign <laughs> So that was more the cosmic. That was another cosmic sign. Okay. <laughs> that was another, two another, head, yeah. another of Sarah Benson's cosmic signs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like, ooh, these monsters, like, they're just looking at me, but they are eating his brain. And, like, I'm so close to the monsters right now because, like, I'm so close to him, but, like, they just want to eat his brain. And that meant what for you while you were... That meant, like, for me, like, he's got a lot going on in his head that, like, he's got a lot going on in his head. I okay. think that's but what But you that weren't meant. together on but it. But we weren't together on it. Okay. Exactly. We okay. were not together on it. Okay. So I was getting all these, like, you know, especially when I started becoming attracted to that comic, I was like, I got to... I gotta break up with him. This this isn't right. I don't feel good when I'm with him. Okay. And I think part of and the how reason. How long did that go on for? Uh, not long. A couple okay. weeks, I think. And like, obviously, I didn't act on it or anything. Like, I would never. Okay. But like, I was like, I have to break up with this guy now. And I think part of it was because like I felt so good and so like empowered while I was doing comedy, you know, like, and he mm-hmm. was not a part of that life at all, yep. like, and didn't really seem like he wanted to be. Because it's a different world. It's, it's a whole different, you too. totally yes. know, yeah. it's like, yeah. you yeah. enter into the cabinet, yeah. like, Lord of the Rings style, yep. yeah, Narnia, yeah. And man. your relationship has to be like, okay, I can live in there for a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and you've got to want to a little bit, too, mm-hmm. like, so, yeah, so I was feeling really good about comedy and stuff, and he wasn't a part of that at all, so I think... So that's when you made the decisions to break up? Yeah, and okay. part of the decision to break up was... And also, like, I was gaining weight, and I was really... I was, like, 60 pounds heavier at this time, so I wasn't feeling super good about myself, except for in comedy. Mm-hmm. Like, my job was really hard and really stressful. I hated it. Like, it was a good job, like... 
you know, it was a good job, but it sucked so much. Like, it was a call center job, essentially. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and, like, so I felt bad about that. Like, I felt bad about my body. Comedy was, like, the only thing that was kind of going well that I, like, felt really good about. Mm -hmm. So, and he wasn't a part of that, like, at all. Okay. So, I... And he wasn't supportive about your job or about your body image or anything like he that? He was supportive or? about my job, and I think, like, body image, like, I don't know. He, I think... He, like, tolerated, I would say. Like, uh, but and you didn't he, communicate about that, or you did? No, we didn't. Okay. And, like, he actually said something that, like, made me feel really weird. He, like, made some comment about, because he struggled with mental health, like, a lot. So he made some comment about how, like, if he was, like, not doing well mentally, we wouldn't even be dating. And, like, the implication was, like, I wouldn't even be attracted to you. He's like, we wouldn't have even mm. met. And I was like, whoa. Like, I don't so know that if that's what he meant. Your body and it did. Kind of yeah. yeah. And we never, I never, like, talked about it. And I don't know if that's what he meant. But that's, like, totally how I felt. Mm -hmm. Especially because he had just lost 60 pounds. So, like, body image I knew was a big thing to him. Mm -hmm. So, it made me feel bad. Yeah, so, he lost 60 pounds. You gained 60 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then that disconnected you also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there was that and So yeah. you made the decision to break up and how did that go? So I asked a bunch of my friends, like, do you think it's okay if I bring cupcakes when I break up with him? <laughs> I think I that just wanted a cupcake. New, yes. And yes, that sounds, what sounds so me about that, Kevin? Uh, that uh, you're like, I'm going to bring a positive thing to this thing. <laughs> and you're going to feel good about yeah, cupcakes. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, yeah, that does sound very me. So I asked a bunch of people. I was like, do you think it's okay? And they're like, I don't know, maybe. Like, who are you? <laughs> like, So I broke up with him. He seemed fine. Did you bring cupcakes? Or no? I did bring the cupcakes. Did, okay. Oh, those cupcakes were so good. <laughs> City of City in Denver. Denver and uh, Make Believe Bakery, the best. Okay. So the cupcakes were incredible. I brought the cupcakes. I broke up with him. He seemed pretty unfazed. His thing was like, can we be friends like immediately? Like, can we just be friends like right now? Transition like, right into that yeah. Okay. Like, can we just be friends then? And I was like, no, like, I can't do that. Like, this is no, like, that's okay. not how I roll. Like, I just can't. So. I gave him a cupcake. I remember being like, I'm going to take this cupcake because it's better. <laughs> and like, I don't know why I was bitter when I was breaking up with him. I'm like, I'm also going to take the box. <laughs> like, it was so, so weird. not leaving it for him. Yeah, yeah I was just weird. Like, yeah. I think I was feeling bitter that he wasn't more hurt or, like, didn't seem upset at all. Uh, okay. But I think, like, neither of us, honestly, were that into the relationship, it seems like. But we were both just hanging but on. But you wanted it to be more meaningful. Yes. At the end than... I always want people to be sad when I break up with them, and okay. no one ever is. <laughs> no. <laughs> no one ever expresses it. Like, I'm realizing, Sarah, people can be sad without expressing it, but, like, yeah, whenever I break up with anybody, they're like, I was going to break up with you first, so, like, no big deal. <laughs> like, Ooh, yeah. yeah that's so, is that, how did you break up? Like, what did you say? I think I said, I think we need to stop seeing each other, like, you know, like, you're great, but, like, I just don't feel like we're compatible in that way, something like that. And the response you got was, okay, we can be friends now? Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, can we be friends right now? <laughs> like, okay. and I was like, so this was nothing to you either. <laughs> like, right. yeah, so. So is that how it ended? Or? That is how it ended. Okay. So, and then the pandemic hit, like, pretty shortly after that. So we weren't going to, like, see each other or be buddies because it was just dangerous to hang out with people okay. and stuff. But you said, yes, be friends, but not yet? Yes. Or? But okay. I said, yes, be friends, but not yet. And then, I don't know exactly when, but at some point, like, we started talking as friends, and we have been talking, like, as friends, but it's just, like, kind of bizarre. Like, we are friends, but we're also, like, so different that, like, it's not, like, a, it's a close friendship, because I know a lot about him, I feel like. I don't feel like he knows a lot about me. And that's okay. And that's how this happens a lot. And that's okay. But, um, like... Yeah, like, we started talking, I think, probably around when I moved back here or something a little bit, and now we do talk, and like... you reached out, or you reached out? I think or? he reached out, okay. and now we do talk pretty regularly, like, we'll probably talk on the phone once a month or something like that, and we text, like, kind of okay. 
intermittently. And you, you would call him a friend. I would call him a friend, okay. yes. And it's just kind of wild now because, like, there are parts of him that I'm realizing are really incompatible with parts of me or whatever. So, like, he bought a house, which is so great. Like, he was trying to buy another house so he could rent out his first house, like, as passive income or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, like, part of me is, like, good for you, but, like, also, like, part of me is, like, ugh, like, being a landlord just feels so sketchy. Like, mm. also, like, you have exorbitant amounts of money. Like, worse. This is just so wild to me. Like, you're looking at buying a $500, $500,000 house, like... So and you can't imagine living in that world. I cannot imagine living in that world where I just have enough money to buy, like, two houses. Like, yeah. wild. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I actually remember. Okay, so, yeah, the housing thing. Then he, like, um, bought, like, an assault rifle, like, an AR-15, and, like, that's like, really extreme, and I was like, I don't feel good about you having this, like, I was very honest with him, he likes shooting it off, apparently, and, like, knowing how it works, and putting it together and stuff, like, he's an engineer dude, so he likes that, but I'm like, I don't, this is, like, not, I don't feel good about this, so. And it didn't feel good for you, and didn't feel like it was who he was? Yeah, it didn't feel different. like who he was, or if it did feel like who he was, it was like, he's becoming something that I don't want to be, like, super tight with you know like so you know we had an open and honest conversation about that I'm like I'm not going to tell you how to live your life but I'm not going to like support you in this at all mm -hmm. so and I did tell him I'm like have you thought about how this is going to impact dating like because I know we're both single and stuff we are kind of open about that it's like yeah I'm just so you can talk about dating we talk about dating a, a little tiny bit as a friend okay. like a little teeny tiny bit it's okay. basically just like, I'm single, you're single, cool. <laughs> like, so still letting each other know. Yeah, so yeah, okay. just as a friend a little bit. I mean, like, I know he dated someone for, like, two weeks at one point, and I think that was pretty much all he's okay. been And doing. you were happy for him? Or? Yeah, well, hell yeah, I'm totally happy for him. If he can find somebody, like, that's awesome. Like, no part of me wants to, like, date him or whatever. Like, okay. very much not interested. Okay. So he, like, bought this gun, and, you know, I told him, I don't feel good about this and and then I was like Marcus like this is going to impact how you date women and how women perceive you like have you thought about that like just as a friend like and as a woman who has dated you and is dating or whatever like I'm not but like I've tried to do that like this is going to be potentially a deal breaker for some people and he's like whoa no I like totally haven't thought about that um and then like two days after we had that conversation he texts me and he's like, I know this, like, if I'm crossing a line, just let me know. But, like, can I, like, fly you out here so we can, like, hang out? Like, can I fly you to Colorado? Or, like, I can even come out there. And I'm like, whoa, like, I definitely do not want you to fly me out to Colorado. That was too much. For that you. was too much. I, I don't even feel comfortable when dudes buy me drinks. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, no, too much. Like, yeah, no. That's I'm, much bigger than a drink. Yeah, that's, like, way too much. Okay. Even though the thing is, like, He's very, like, well-off, you know, with his houses and so software he can afford engineer. It. Yeah, it's and not it much nice for gesture, him. It's a nice it was, gesture. Uh, hey, we should be back together. What did you... Did, did I don't no know. Attention? Did you have an attention? You see, like, when I think about it from my perspective, I think about, like, he knows that I know him really well. And, like, I know he feels comfortable around me. Like, I think think that part of him kind of did want some sort of like romantic connection mm -hmm. like just knowing him um because I think for the same reason almost that we dated he just you know doesn't want to try that much more like or doesn't feel like it maybe and this is all just me like maybe making Scenario stuff up. Yeah, head, yeah yeah so like part of me was kind of thinking yeah I think he might want something a little bit more right. and I don't even know if I let that thought go into like the big part of my mind I just kind of like thought like are we gonna <laughs> like are we gonna have sex like I don't know <laughs> like, what did you do with that thought but that thought I was like on the one hand having sex with is fun but on the other hand I don't want to actually have sex with Marcus so 
this hand definitely won. The hand that was like, I'm not interested so, in him. Like, how I did you wanna... go through that process to win? Was it immediate? Like, this is what I knew? Or you struggled with it? No, it was a struggle. I definitely talked to my friends. I asked you about it. And I was like, do I have to have sex with this guy if he comes to visit me? <laughs> um, my sister was like, you have to have that conversation before he gets on the plane. And I'm like, can't I just play it by ear? Like, and then uh, I talked to my dad. And I didn't say any of the sex stuff. But I was like, dad, I just don't want to deal with coming like interacting with him feels like a lot of emotional labor like you know with the gun thing and it's just always been like me feeling like I know way more about him than, than he knows about me and you're supporting him yes more. I'm supporting him more Is he supporting you I don't feel so? like there was that level I feel like he wants to but I just feel like because we've never been compatible in that way it's never even been an option feel comfortable sharing enough or yeah okay. I think that's it because okay. I did not feel comfortable like being authentic and like sharing parts of myself with him okay so I'm like, Dad, I don't want to deal with it. And he's like, just cancel, Sarah. Just cancel. And I'm like, hell yeah, Dad. <laughs> Anytime a dad can stop their daughter from having sex, they do. <laughs> Anytime they can be like, no, just cancel. Just don't. Yeah, it's a very dad thing. Yes. To do. And you listen. That's yes. a good daughter. And I did listen, and it was like, the, the answer that I wanted, it was okay. like, I just want someone to make me feel like I can get out of this. Okay. So I... So that helped give you the decision for it. Yes. Instead of struggling with yes. it. Yes. Okay. I was looking for someone to just be like, it's okay to feel like you want to cancel and it's okay for you to cancel. Because that's funny because when you asked me that, I think the last thing you said after I said, do you remember what I said? Which was... Oh, yeah. If you, if you want to... Do it if you don't. Don't. Yeah. But do you remember what you said? No. Okay. You said, oh, you're such a good dad figure. Ah, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Oh. You were looking that for me, but you got it from your dad. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's sweet. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> but yeah, so I canceled. And then, um, like, most recently we talked and... Oh, uh, it's just too bad. He, like, found some conspiracy article on the internet. Now he thinks the world is going to end in 2040. So it was, like, a two-hour conversation about mostly just trying to talk him, like, off of that ledge a little bit. And then, like, after I got off the phone, it was just, like, I feel like I wasted two hours of my life. Like, mm. you know, like, what did I get out of that conversation other than, like, this feeling that I had to make at least feel a little bit okay with reality and you know you care like, about them enough I, to spend those two hours but yes, it felt like a waste yes to you exactly okay. exactly so it was kind of validating it was like it's good that you canceled like because I had all these feelings like if he came to visit it would feel like work a little bit you know so he's not a bad dude it's just like wild like the compatibility thing just was not there okay so. and so at this point you're still friends and maintaining friendship even though there's more disconnections yes okay but yes. you're not in relationship but if you were to see each other maybe you want to do sex or maybe you wouldn't want to have sex. oh yeah at this point probably not okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah yeah okay. all right yeah. so so the the sexual part of the relationship's over yes the friendship part of the relationship is maintained yeah but the relationship of dating is done correct yeah okay. yeah i mean obviously with the distance i don't want to date anyone who's even like an hour away from me unless they're like the love of my gosh darn life <laughs> like you know but like with him especially it just feels like no i He's, like, what I don't want in a partner, you know? Like, he's a great guy. He's going to be great for somebody, but, like, just was not. It was just wasn't there. Okay. I did not love him, and I think I, you know, I think I hadn't been in love to know, like. So your definition it. of love, you figured out some, and that's part of what you've learned? Yeah, I okay. kind of have since then. I read this really beautiful book by, or I'm reading this book by Viktor Frankl. You know I love Viktor Frankl. Mm -hmm. I love him. I know I love him. <laughs> because I know I love him now. It, yes. yes, I feel it. And he, like, described love as feeling like the other person's personality is like a whole world that you get to explore. Mm -hmm. Like, and, you know, like, it's such a gift, and, like, it gives your life meaning, and it gives their life meaning meaning even if they don't love you like it gives meaning to like both of you because you find them as like this unique and irreplaceable presence and like I think I have experienced that but I definitely did not experience that with and I don't think I had experienced it necessarily up to that point in my life so like yeah it was so definitely but that feels not. like a realistic thing that you know you can look for and is out there yeah oh 100% I definitely have felt it and I think I felt it like before 
it's just in smaller increments with okay. like a dude. And you felt at the beginning with. I don't even think there was any love there necessarily. Like, I think I wanted there to be potential. Like, and I think maybe there was potential, but I don't really think there was any there. Like, okay. honestly. Okay. No. But you have the potential to have it in you. And yes. Out, oh, so. I know. I know. I can. I totally know. Like, okay. and I think I've had some unrequited love experiences since then. And like the benefit of those is that I know I'm very capable of love. Great. So, awesome. hell yeah. yeah. So anything else you've learned from this relationship or anything else that you want to share with us? Uh, break up cupcakes. Go team. <laughs> break up cupcakes. You know, maybe hit or miss, but also, like, I just know, I think for right now, I'm just really not trying to date, and I'm not on the dating apps, and I do think I don't, like, mesh well with the dating apps, to be honest, like. So staying off of those is important right now. Yes, and staying off of those is important until there comes a day when I'm like, I want to find somebody, and then I'll go on eHarmony, and then it'll be done. It'll just be done in a second. It'll <laughs> so be that'll done. Work. You've got your that plan, that'll work. will work. Okay. 100% success rate, that is the game plan. But like, um, no, I think also dating apps, they give you like a deficit mindset. It makes you feel like being single, you're missing out on something when I don't think you are. Okay. So I think like there's that and also meeting people on the dating apps. I think I sometimes become like a version of myself that they want me to be. Or I think I did kind of in this relationship. And I don't think I like gave myself enough pulse checks with how the relationship was actually doing. Okay. So just for me, dating apps, just not happening. Probably dating, just not happening. Okay. So you're off dating apps, off dating, take care of Take you Taking care of me. And seeing if something happens, but open for love unrequited and otherwise oh hell yeah open for unrequited love all the time love that open for requited love <laughs> i would be super into that okay. fans at home okay. you're picking up on my vibe just kidding <laughs> <laughs> just kidding but yeah unrequited love i'm really feeling is okay too and i've experienced that and i think that's okay but like any type of love is a gift you know and there was no love with this and it was still okay it was just it was just different, so. Right. So you were cool. maintaining friendship with them and see where that goes, but there was no love requited or otherwise. No. In that relationship, so. No. Okay. no. Anything else you'd like to share with us or anything else you learned or no? I learned a bunch of stuff. I don't even remember it all, but I'll have to watch this podcast and think about it. <laughs> I learned, uh, you know, a lot of stuff. And also, like, thanks so much, Kevin. Like, I was so comfortable with you. Like, you really made me comfortable. So I'm very thank glad. You. Thank yeah. you very much, Sarah, for thanks, being Kevin. on Relationship Ready Talks. Uh, please uh, support us. Subscribe, like, and comment, and have discussions, and hopefully there's something from this conversation and Sarah's relationship that you can relate to. And Oh, wait. I did learn one thing. Can I say one more thing? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. They have to really be into, like, the stuff that you're into at least a little bit. Like, they have to try. Like, they have to try. Like, for me, it's comedy. You got got to be into the comedy, you know? You got to be okay with it. You got to, like... Share the highs. Be into that. Yes. Like films and stuff. You know, ideally you'll like that kind of thing. And Museums share some and of stuff. that. But share at least some of that. Make the effort. Make the effort. It. Hiking. Yeah, you know, like all that kind of stuff. You have to at least try. And someday I will try to be into someone else's things. Okay. So if, so, so if you found somebody and they were really into like bugs and entomology, you would try and that would be worth it. For the love. Yes. Okay. I would try. I'd be like, okay. wow, babe, what a cool beetle. And he'd be like, that's not a beetle. <laughs> <laughs> but they would have to have other qualities as well, too, yeah. that you were into? Or? Yeah, probably. Okay. I really don't know. Okay. I really have no but one in my mind. Out. I have no one in my mind where I'm like, yeah, I've got nothing to compare it to, I guess. Yeah, okay. you figure it out. But yeah. do you feel like you're more ready for relationships from what you've learned in this relationship? Yes, I okay. do. I do. I do. Mm -hmm. And other relationships have really helped me learn things, too. So Good. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for sharing. And that is what we do. Sorry about that. Help people be more ready. So I hope you are more ready. And we will see you next time in Relationship Ready Talks. Thanks, thanks. Kevin. Thanks, sir. Thanks Sorry. for coming. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for having me.